Real Life, Real Music Radio, with your host, Kyle Hutton. I'm doing great, Chris. How are you this evening? I'm doing good. Good. Well, we're glad you're here. Thanks for making the trip down for Kentucky to come hang out with us. Thanks for having me. That's our pleasure. I just, I just thought of this. I hadn't thought of it. Uh, but, you know, you came from Kentucky, and this barn did, too. Yeah, this old barn came from yeah. Kentucky. I don't... I knew that. Do you know where it came from in, in, in uh, retrospect to Slaughter's, Kentucky? Slaughter's somewhere in central Kentucky, I would say. I think that's where Steve told us. Uh, Where's Michael Ford? He put this thing back together. He would know where they picked it up. We'll try to find that out by the end of the night. Well, thank you for the trip down. I know you're starting to run... Uh, here in Texas and maybe over into Oklahoma, but we're glad to be your first stop tonight. Yep, glad to be here. Well, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions tonight, but before we get started with me doing that, uh, I'll just ask you to pick one that you want to play for us to kick things off tonight. While they're tuning, I'll tell you, in the local market, 99.7 KVST on Sunday nights at 6 o'clock is when they broadcast the show. And I can't remember which one they're running this week. I think maybe I think maybe Billy Joe Shaver is our show that we're going to rerun this week. We love Billy Joe Shaver, and, uh, you know, he's one of many that we lost this year. And uh, so if you haven't heard that episode or weren't here for that show, Check it out, because it's one of my favorite ones we've done. I got to Honda 125 and run. Took the back road to the store. About 35 degrees, but it sure feels good not to be walking no more. I got some milk, bread, and bologna, some little Debbie's and some Mountain Dew. Sometimes when I ain't got the Grocery gonna see what this thing will do. Little victory. They all ride with me. These days, that's all I need. I got a F-250, four by four, needing a new rear end. I sold some hides and I sold some wood, saving up to get it going again. And I can start hauling these timbers, sell them down at the mine. Here they're bringing a few bucks a piece. Things are looking better all the time. Little victory. All right with me These days that's all I need Heard the country's going through hard times, but I ain't feeling it enough. We all trying to make it through one more day, but when it's all said and done, I got a deer and a half in the freezer. I've got wheels and plenty of wood. I know I ain't setting the world on fire, but I think I got it pretty good. Little victory. They all ride with me. These 
days, that's all I need. Little victory, they all ride with me. These days, that's all I need. You know, I know you. That one was on Little Victories. Put that back out in in, in twenty twelve. But that that sounds like it was written for right now. I mean, the hope and the optimism and the contentment in that song. Yeah. Uh, it makes me feel good on a day like today when there's just been all kinds of crazy stuff going on in the world. Oh no shit. <laughs> Do you do you remember do you remember where you were when you got the idea for that song or what like what what the initial thing was that set that song rolling in your head? It was a 2007 presidential election. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, I didn't get around to writing it till the you know. February or yeah, whatever the we had an ice storm in western Kentucky, Missouri. It was pretty bad. It was pretty, you know. We were out of power for twenty three days and a lot of people were out for uh you know, a month or better. And, you know, trees across roads couldn't get out and all that. You yeah. Know, so but uh, you know we were good. We had, we had plenty of wood. And <laughs> you know, I had a chainsaw, <laughs> so we were able to hike our way out of there after about a week. You know, if we had to. You know, but really we were in good shape. So, so you talk about the deer in the freezer on that one, and even when we were ordering dinner tonight, you know, you, your, your, your diet consists mainly of uh, stuff that you uh, can bring in yourself, if, if I'm getting Well, right. I mean, me and my son, I mean, you know, I, I don't do as much hunting as he used to, but my son is like a, he's uncontrollable. You know, he brings <laughs> in, he brings in a bunch of wild game and, you know, I'd say we're in good shape, you know, we're in good shape as long as we can keep the electricity on for, you know, till we use it up. Keep it cold. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So, okay, so Chris, I, I want to ask you, I'm going to take you way back to the beginning. And, and uh, I heard or read somewhere that you asked for your first guitar when you were three years old. Right. A little plastic guitar. Yeah. What, wh where did that come from? What, what music was being played around your house that made you even think about wanting to pick up a guitar? Like, where did that come from, that, that desire to do that? Uh, at that time, I mean, could have been, you know, seeing, I, I don't know if even Johnny Cash even had a show on TV, but there were, uh, um, you know, a lot of music on the radio. I was hearing stuff, and... Uh, you know, I, I just, I really don't know where that came from, but I had an uncle. He's actually a ex-uncle. Okay. <laughs> and he uh, he played guitar. And I remember when I was little, he'd be down at my grandmother's house. He, he played guitar on Christmas and stuff, you know. And so I just liked the looks of them and, we didn't have any records or anything way back then, but as we went along, you know, we'd get a little bitty record player, and uh, I don't know, I just, uh, 
you know, like Yellow Rose of Texas was like I was one of the first songs that that I remember uh, uh, singing, you know. Just. No wonder Rick Perry made you an honorary Texan. Yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that's good. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, that, that was the first one, and he was playing on a little, uh, one of those little suitcase-style turntables. You know, yeah. When I was a kid, five years old or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I wonder whose version it was. <laughs> It was uh, Ernest Tubbs. Was it? Okay. Yeah. All right. There you yeah. go. Well, is there is there a uh, is there a song from from back in the early days, maybe one of the first records or whatever that that brings back more memories of of home or or those inspirations from from when you were young that you still play in the set today? Um. You know, about all of my songs have been that way. You know. I mean, uh, real route hits pretty close to home. And you want to play that one for us? Yeah, I'll play that. Let's see. I got to do a little tuning, though. Know. You can cut that part out. Build a fire up on the hill. Sit in the woods, drink my fill, talk to God all night. Took another shot and set me right. I walked down to the road, filled a beer can full of 22 holes and I said goodbye. Yeah, I said goodbye. And I go back, but I can't go home. River's up and the road is closed. Ain't no telephone at my mother's house. And all the lights are out down on the river road. Ain't much or nothing left of this place where I became myself. Goes to memory. I walk on by, but to follow me is St. Penny on down the road. Asking me if they seen my brother. He just said no. Yes, I better go. I go back, but I can't go home. River's up and the road is closed. Ain't no telephone at my mother's house. And all the lights are out down on the river. Build a fire up on the hill. Sit in the woods, drink my fill, talk to God all night. 
Took another shot and said, be right. I found my mother's grave. Sang the only verse I know of amazing grace. And I go back, but I can't go home. The river's up and the road's closed. Ain't no telephone at my mother's house. And all the lights are out down on the river. Thank you. So Rural Route was on the record, uh, on the record Enough Rope came out back in 2006. So I want to ask you about one of my favorite songs on that record, and that's the, that's the title track of it, Enough Rope. I, I wonder if you'd tell us about that one. Um. I ran into a kid that I used to play Little League Baseball with down at uh, uh, Seabury, Kentucky, basically where I grew up. I grew up in between two small towns and spent a lot of time in Seabury. And uh, um, I hadn't seen him since we played Little League Baseball. <laughs> He uh, was working for the city, you know, and uh, we had a real good conversation, and I don't know, on the way home, I just uh, hollered out, I work for the city <laughs> in the town where I grew up, you know, and, uh, and it just kind of went from there, you know, and I wrote, you know, I rode on it for a few days, and me and Austin uh, finished it up. By the way, Austin is a genuine Texan. Yeah, he is. Mr. Austin no, Cunningham. You are no, no. <laughs> You're the only one up here that's been proclaimed by the governor. <laughs> so. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> Austin ain't been proclaimed. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I had I've been here my whole life and I hadn't got that honor. So uh, so that song en enough rope is that one you can play for us. I didn't see it on your list, but as a fan, I just wanted to ask. Yeah. That's kind of taking your life in your own hands with a guy that's got a bunch of songs about killing people. I know. <laughs> got to be careful. Got to be careful about. I figure we got a lot of witnesses in here tonight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Old guitar don't wanna ain't acting right. Welcome to Houston area. Yeah. Humidity loves us. It was in real good tune when I was sitting at the kitchen table. <laughs> I work for the city in the town where I grew up. Some days I run the back hole, and some days I run the dump. If I had other plans on my graduation day, several years ago, 
gets a howl a mile away. Yeah, a howl a mile away. Well, she told me she was pregnant on the day I turned 18. I did what you're supposed to do. I bought her a ring. He didn't have to ask us, but he asked us anyway. We stood up, said I'd do, what else were we gonna say? What else were we gonna say? And I'm thankful for the things I have And all the things I don't I got dreams that will come true I got some that won't But most of the time I walk the line Wherever it goes Cause you can't hang yourself If you ain't got enough rope My boss man is a mayor I do just what he asks I mow the courthouse lawn Watch the prisoners walking past I'm lucky to be working Instead of wearing chains Like my cousin Willie He's locked up in the grain He's locked up in the grain And I'm thankful for the things I have and all the things I don't I got dreams that will come true I got some that won't but Most of the time I just walk the line Wherever it go Cause you can't hang yourself you ain't got enough rope There's a tavern down the highway I go to drink some beer I wash down all I'm missing By hanging around here And I drive back to the trailer I make up with my wife I kiss my sleeping children And I get on with my life Get on with my life yeah. Thank you I know I'm hopping all over the place, but uh, I, I want to ask you about the uh, the newest record put out. You put it out in October of 19, mm -hmm. almost daylight, and the very first song on that record is obviously probably the first song any of us heard if we downloaded the record, and that's "I'm William Callahan." That's uh, that's that's one of my favorites, and that record's got a. I mean, it's got a bunch of great songs on it, but that one uh, that one hits me every time I hear it, and you you've got a You've got a thread of Williams running through a lot of your catalog. <laughs> Tell us a little bit yeah. about William Callahan. I don't know. I got a cousin that 
stole the school bus when he was uh, about 16. And we got the shit beat out of him by the cops. <laughs> I don't know what radio station you're playing this on. We, we'll make it work. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a legal word on a radio station. Yeah, right? I haven't gotten any any letters from the FCC yet, so I think we're uh, I think we're all right. I've had to bleep out a few things, but I think we're okay there. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I mean, I just he's about the only way you might know. Um, <laughs> it seems like a good. Uh, you know, but sometimes William, somebody else, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. But, yeah, William Callahan, that was a song. Actually, it started out uh, Wilson Callahan, and then I changed it to William. You know, I, I, I do that all the time. I use... Uh, women's names, you know, a lot of times it's because they sound good. I mean, I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't want to write a song called Robert Callahan or something, yeah. you know, so. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with, I got an uncle named, that was named Robert, so. But, you know, Mary, Pops up all the time. Who's Mary? Who's who's uh, who's Maria? Who's this? And I was like, sounds good in a song. <laughs> you know, I couldn't think of a, another name. Well, well, to uh, I think probably to us as fans, they're like uh, amazing characters in the mysterious world of Chris Knight. I think is is, is yeah. what they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Becky, absolutely. Well, will you play play that one for us? I'm William Callahan. All right. It's, I just uh, I wrote the song with a friend of mine, uh, Tim Crackle. He uh, was great. He was a great guitar player and uh, uh, played with Jimmy Buffett for a long time. And uh, and he was a friend of mine. And uh, we wrote a bunch of songs together. And uh, this is one we wrote. And I always loved the song, and uh, but there was a thing or two, you know. We we'd sit down and write a song. We'd write it, you know. We'd write it. Okay, let's let's go drink a beer. You know? yeah. And but, you know, so there's, you know, when you're doing that, you don't go back to it. But I always liked the lyrics of it and the uh, subject matter. And uh, so I got ready to make this record, and I thought about that song, and I thought, you know, I can rewrite a little bit of this. So I went and put in, uh, drug it back out, and I wrote, I rewrote several lines in the song and uh, changed the chorus a little bit, and completely changed the melody on it to where it felt comfortable to me. And, uh, you know, so that's where that, that came from when I put it out on uh, Almost Daylight. Yeah. But uh, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'm William Callahan I Used to be a rambling man Left home at 17 Hopped freight to Birmingham Started poised Kentucky coat Lined my pocket with Denver gold And I've been cold as the last of snow Searching for the sun 
was a long time ago I had a restless soul the Trains come and whistle blow I let them roll It's my wife Angeline She used to be Cajun queen Took her from the mayor's son Bourbon Street in New Orleans She had a will no man could tame Took a chance when they came Leveling me on a midnight train Searching for the sun Was a long time ago She had a restless soul The trains come and whistle blow She let them roll Trains roll, blowing steam through an old man, an old woman's dream. We look in each other's eyes, and light we ain't seen. We be out there running the night, but we run the race, fought the fight. We think we did all right. was a long time ago We had a restless soul Trains come, the whistle blow We let them roll So from that from that first little guitar, did, well, you, you wanted a guitar at three years old. Did you get it? Yeah, I got. I had several of them that ended up getting broke. You know, <laughs> somebody would break it over each other's head or whatever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we saw that on movies. You know, uh, practiced on each other. Huh? <laughs> I got gotcha. you. So yeah, it's, it's just uh, yeah, I'm three years old. One record that was really cool way back there that we had was like the Venturas uh, singing, uh, playing, I don't, I don't know if y'all are familiar with them, but they were playing some really cool guitar music. And it might have come from my aunt. But uh, you know, Johnny Rivers, we had an old record of his, mm -hmm. and uh, was Secret Agent Man, you know, and he was a hell of a guitar player. And it just, I don't know, it just, I always wanted to play, kind of, and I had a imitation electric guitar too. And I remember looking at that and the neck was broke. You know, it was just a little metal, get, it was a metal guitar. Okay. You probably could have tuned it up and played it, but I had no idea how to <laughs> tune it up. But uh, eventually, you know, it just got destroyed. And uh, and then when my uh, my brother got out of high school, I was still I was 
15, I guess, and he he was working in the coal mines. He probably 19, 20 years old. He went to college for a while, and uh, he went in the mines, and uh, so he I come in one day, and he had a uh, he had a there was an acoustic guitar laying on the couch. I came home from school, and he was gone working second shift in the mines. You know, he was he would work till whenever they got off midnight and then drink and smoke pot till daylight and then, you know, come home and, and, uh, and, uh, go to bed and then get up, go to work. But, uh, he had, uh, that guitar laying there and a chord book. And, uh, I just, Came in, and I sat down, and I, rem I remember fooling with it all night, you know. Yeah. I got up the next morning and went to school, and uh, I just stayed with it, you know. I was eat up with the guitar. Yeah. And that's when I started learning songs and, and uh, singing, you know, trying to sing. Yeah. I'm still trying. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never been accused of being a good singer. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, one of my favorite episodes is going to play on our radio show this week, and that's the time I got to sit up with, with Billy Joe Shaver. And, you know, we lost a lot of really great songwriters this year, including one that I know was extremely special to you. And, Probably somebody I, I, you really cut your teeth learning how to play the guitar was on John Prine songs. Yeah. Got to do a pretty special thing with him on the latest record. Yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about John as an influence and maybe some of the other guys that made you want to want to learn their songs. Oh. Uh, you know, the, it is, I mean, I was just hearing everything on the radio up till I was about 12, 13 years old. I remember actually being 12 years old and we had, uh, we had uh, the uh, Every Picture Tells a Story by Rod Stewart and it's a great album. Yeah. And we, uh, and I listened to that a lot. You know, I listened to it even after you know, I started listening to everything else, and I still listen to it every now and then. But it's just—it's a great album, and uh, somewhere along in there, I mean, and this sounds crazy, but like uh, "Spiders and Snakes" by Jim Stafford, <laughs> I heard that on the radio, and I said, "Hell yeah, I like the way that sounds." <laughs> you know, I like the instrumentation and everything. It wasn't just uh, pop music, you know, it, it was, uh, it just sounded cool, you know, and, and, uh, and then Blackwater by the Doobie Brothers came out, and that's what just completely turned me into, mm -hmm. like, just seeking out music like that. My brother, probably by that time, he had a big record collection, uh, where I was listening to John Prime when I was 13 years old, and he was already, uh, I, you know, I mean, he had, he was, he was making money, and he was, uh, you know, we had TV that used to just roll, you know, black and white. And I couldn't get nobody to come and watch TV. None of my friends would come to my house and watch TV because we had a black and white TV. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, uh, and him and my mother, he was waiting to go to work. Him and my mother was sitting there. And my mother drove a school bus, and she was waiting to go on her route, middle of the day or whatever. And there's soap operas on her or something, and and he told her, "Get up, get your coat on. Let's take a ride." And they went to Madisonville. And uh, he wrote a, I mean, he bought a, a, a brand new color TV. I 
you know, <laughs> and a, one that was about this size, you know, console TV. And then he had a big stereo, too, you know, a big uh, Pioneer stereo with the big speakers and a huge record collection, <laughs> you know. And that's where I was listening, hearing all that. Then stuff. everybody wanted to come to the house, right? Yeah. <laughs> Now nah, nobody really wants to come. To my house. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't enough of an attraction. Okay, so so somewhere, it, you know, you you, in between that three-year-old and in uh, you you making your trip to Nashville, and in 1998, you know, getting signed to a record deal, and and you know, when did you decide to write? like start writing your own songs you were learning other people's songs but when did you start deciding you're going to try to write your own song well i've been right uh, trying for you know since i started playing the guitar okay and i just i knew you know i just didn't have it at that time you know it would have been great if i could have uh you know really started writing decent songs when i was like 20 21 22 and I always wanted to try to be in the music business, but uh, I knew, you know, I mean, I, I was always torn between doing something like that and then just, you know, I went to college, I got a, I got a bachelor's degree in agriculture, and it was like, you know, I got, I, I was always torn in between being a, irresponsible musician, singer, songwriter, and and making a living myself and taking care of myself. I didn't want to be living off my parents and sleeping on people's couches and shit like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, um, at, at 26, I started I didn't even have a guitar for like two years, two or three years, because I sold it to a guy, you know, and uh, a friend of mine, actually. And then one day I was walking through a mall over in Evansville, Indiana, and uh, with a girl I was dating at the time, and there was a guitar hanging up there. And uh, it was an old Alvarez, and I picked it up, and... Uh, that was a great guitar. It sounded really good, and I wrote the majority of the songs that I've I've uh, written on that guitar. Really? And uh, you know, just sitting at the kitchen table, you know, you couldn't plug it in and make it sound very good. But uh, you know, it was just uh, at that time. About that time is when I started writing songs. I heard Steve Earle, they was playing him on the radio, and uh, I, I remember the first time I ever called a radio station was, I heard Arlene by Marty Stewart. It's mm. all in about 86, yep. maybe 87, and, uh, and it said it was Marty Stewart singing Arlene, and uh, which was his first radio song, and uh, you know, I just I wanted to do that. Yeah. Well, it, it didn't, didn't, well, we say it didn't take long. <laughs> and so know, I, I started good, writing at that time. Yeah. yeah. It, so you feel like you really started seriously writing at 26. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 26. I, I wrote probably 60 songs uh, there the first year and then uh, just kept on writing. Yeah. And I started sending songs to Nashville and uh, found some publishers that would actually listen to them, you know, yep. put them on a cassette tape. And they'd, uh, I'd get handwritten, I got handwritten letters, you know, we like what you're doing, just keep writing. Yeah. You know, and uh, so I did and finally, you know, just went to Nashville and got on a writer's night and, you know, just lucked out, you know, uh, the guy that signed me to uh, my first publishing deal and then my first record deal was in the audience. And I played some songs 
you know, he saw something. And yeah. I went down and played for him. And then still took about a year and a half to even hook back up with him. But I went down to his office and he said, you know, you got one finished song. And so um, he said, I, I need, I had like five songs. I had a bunch of songs, but I wouldn't play them for anybody. And he said, I need, you know, I need 25, 30 songs, you know. And he hooked me up with some people uh, going and playing writer's nights. And I just kept writing, writing, and then I started playing, writing some better songs. And then he, he, I met back up with him and played him the newer songs. And, and he decided that he would... Uh, make a commitment and, you know, he said, but I need a new song every week. So, <laughs> it's Frank Liddell. So I'd, I'd write a new song every week, take it down there and play it for him and he eventually got me signed to my publishing deal and then signed me to, uh, by the time I signed the publishing deal, he moved to uh, Decca Records and he signed me over there and uh, Decca Records for my yeah. first record deal. That's Frank Liddell. And that's where, yeah. that's probably where most of us heard from you first. Yeah, you know that what first I mean? record. Like that's, yeah, that's, they, so I want to ask you about the first song on that record, It Ain't Easy Being Me. Yeah. It Ain't Easy Being Me. That's a, I mean, that's a great song. And, and the other thing I want to know is how much dust you ate during the filming of that music video with all those... Uh, at the, the crash up derby. <laughs> I don't even remember. It was just, you know, I don't think it was that bad. Really. Not that bad. Yeah. It wasn't at that time. You know, it probably bothered me now. But, you know. <laughs> but it was uh, it was a lot of fun making that video. You play that one for us? Sure. Are y'all doing okay out there? Is everybody yeah. good? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I ought to 
be a sideshow act for freaks like me. Yeah, I could be the star of the show with my name on the marquee. In a room with a big red button that says, Danger, do not touch. Twice a day I'd mash it down and you could watch me self-destruct. Yeah, why do I do the things I do? Was born this way of myself, made free. Shoot the light, curse the dark. Need your love, but it'll break your heart. I know the words that'll bring you back. Don't say nothing as I watch you pass. I had to work to be the jerk I've come to be. It ain't easy being me It ain't easy being me As a as a as a songwriter, you know, you mentioned having a publishing deal and being in being in Nashville writing songs. You've you've had some songs recorded by by other artists. Uh, you know, th there's there's a pretty long list. Blake Shelton's on it. But one of the people that that uh, I like really uh, their version of one of your songs out of all the people that have cut your songs is Frank Liddell's wife. Leanne Walmack. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. and you, you included your version of Send It On Down on the most recent record. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you think about her version? That's, uh, I thought I, it was really it. good, yeah. Yours is better. <laughs> well, she, she came and sang on the uh, record in the studio, and she uh, brought her own... She, she brought her own deal to that, and it made... Was really good. She yeah. she she come up with a part to play to sing with me, not just a harmony part. And uh, yeah, I thought it was great. You know, it's, it's really uh, you know. I mean, I I I I was around Lee Ann and Frank. You know, back when I I was with Decca. You know, and all the other artists that were on Decca and just hanging out and stuff like that. So I knew her and uh, been around her a good bit. So I'm, I'm, I was glad she came down and did it. But uh, yeah, I liked her version. Well, it's a great song. I, I, I love Send It On Down. It, it, is there any, I mean, any, any big backstory on that one or just what, <laughs> where, where were you at when you sat and wrote that one? That's another song that uh, a friend of mine, uh, David Leone, we, we wrote several songs together. We wrote North Dakota together. Okay. And we had this idea, and uh, we sat down and write, wrote it. And uh, pretty much was the same song, you know, that I recorded, but I did change one line on it. And, uh, when I recorded it, because it's another one of those songs that's like, it's just one line in there. I don't, you know, I can't sing. And so I changed it. And, and uh, whenever I recorded it, so, you know, um, I, I, had, I had people that I like to write with, you know, and I'd write with them, and then we'd get to a certain point where, like, you know, we we done wrote all the songs we could write. You know, I did that, I've done that with 
a lot of people. You know, when you write a bunch of songs, you have a great time, you know. But You want to play that one for us? <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Sunday morning and the church bells ring. And I can just about hear all the good folks sing. Jesus, what you say to me? I'm going crazy. I need some help getting out of this town. Are there any answers? I'd sure like to hear one. Well, if you got something, won't you send it on down? Oh, while I'm still able to be found.
Thank you. Yeah. That's a great song. So that one's on the Almost Daylight record. And another one I wanted to ask you about on that record is uh, Crooked Mile. Could you tell us about that song, play it for us? Yeah, I'll, uh, I've, um, I had that uh, first couple of verses laying around for a good while. And, uh, we just been playing it, trying to figure out what to do with the chorus. And uh, um, it just took a took a long time. It's probably two years from the time I started writing it till I finished it up. Finished it up with Gary Nicholson, uh, who's another Texan. Yep. And uh, <coughs> and uh, yeah, he he. We wrote a bunch of songs together, me and Gary did, and, and uh, we, I, I wrote, we had, we were all around the idea for the course, and, you know, we just kept hacking at it and finally got it together. Gotcha. And then, but, yeah, I always liked the idea of the song. I'm not sure what the give a shit factor is <laughs> of it, but I always liked it. So we'll play it for you. Thank you. Cold black eyes and a heartbroken smile. Follow me down the crooked mile. Everybody say we ain't no good. We ain't going back even if we could. Back in the where the law don't go Down in the hollow where the wind don't blow Gonna raise us a family and make us a home We'll be alright if they leave us alone Ain't never had nothing to hold on to A 
Her cold black eyes and her heart broke smile Follow me down crooked mile And everybody said we ain't no good Going back even if we could And I ain't never had nothing Ain't never had nothing to hold on to Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Got to be a band out there that can do a hell of a lot better job on that song than I do. <laughs> well, it's kind of cool to get the acoustic version from a Kentucky boy in an old Kentucky barn right here in the middle of the Woodlands, yeah. Texas. So we're, yeah. we appreciate you being here and, and doing that for Did us. Did you ever find out where it came from? Hey, is Michael Ford or Steve still around here? Where's this? Where was this? Uh, do you know where this barn was? What town they they pulled it out of? Or just northern Kentucky? I think it was Richmond. A rock's throw away from Indiana, so south of oh, Evansville. Okay. It would have been northern probably. Kentucky. Uh, okay, so you mentioned kind of the late '80s. About the same time, you probably hearing Steve Earle for the first time was the first time I was hearing him and. I was a big, you know, Bruce Springsteen fan and John Mellencamp fan, and <laughs> I always, I always kind of leaned towards the, the story songs. And one of your story songs that I would just put right there in the category of any of the best stuff from those guys is is Down the River. I mean, what a great story and a and a, a, a great song. Um, Man, I mean, I don't know that one needs a whole lot of explanation, but <laughs> what do you want to tell us about that one? Well, I'd tell you, but I'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> play on, play on. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I spent time when I was a kid around the Green River with my brother and my dad fishing trot lines and, you know, and... You know, my older brother, he had a boat, you know, when uh, he was in high school. And used to, we had trot lines during the summer, and I'd help him out a little bit. And, and then, my, you know, my dad take off from work and uh, during the summer, and we'd run lines out there. And uh, I don't know, there's just a, a lot of people a lot of people down there and you know there's always some kind of something going on you know with, uh, somebody fixing the somebody running somebody else's lines and yeah. things like that somebody getting in a fight in town and things like that you know and uh, I was in Chattanooga uh, doing a, some kind of festival down there and and uh, I could see the the uh, Cumberland. It wasn't the Cumberland. It was the uh, Tennessee River from 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 my motel room. And uh, I wrote that song in like a little over an hour. Wow! You know, I just wow. yeah. I just you know, I'd been on the road a while, and you know, just was thinking about it. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's been a Good song for me. <laughs> it's a great song for us. I really don't ever get tired of playing it. You know?
I was 18, my brother was 21. One Saturday evening, when all the work was done, we went down to the river, had some tried lines to run. My brother Walter had a fight the week before. Knocked a boy named Wilson through the pool hall door. He said you don't mess with Wilson unless you want a war. Made the engine run. We loaded the lantern against the sinking sun. My brother Walter was loading his gun. We went down the river. past the cold docks we were running our land heard some drunk boaters racing up behind his Wilson and his cousin had trouble on their mind they passed on by us Probably going to tend their pipe. We headed up the river with the fish we caught. But before we made the land, I thought I heard a shot back down the river. My brother Walter fell over the side. I couldn't find him, no matter how I tried. And I looked along the bank, couldn't find with it high. They drove the river. Searched it up and down Couldn't find his body So they decided that he'd drown But I knew better Wilson bragged around town So one night I floated down Right above Wilson's shack I hid in the woods till I saw him walk out back. I put a bullet in his head and dropped him in his tracks. We went down.
Down below the trestle Where the water runs slow I chained him to an anvil And then I let him go and Five years later I ain't told a soul Done much fishing, I hardly wet a line. The death of my brother is still heavy on my mind. I've been thinking with some cousin, but I find a place to hide. Cause I'm going down the river. Thank you. So that one's on the record, a pretty good guy, which is a, it's a great, uh, great record. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask you if you do one more off that record for us, Becky's Bible. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll try. Um, you might have to get somebody to overdub part of it. I'm sure you can cut this part out. Uh, hey, edited for rebroadcast. We can uh, we can cut it out unless we love it, and then we'll leave it in. Y'all still all doing all right out there? Yeah. Everybody good tonight? Yeah. Having a good time? This is much better than anything on Netflix or anything else we could be doing. This is like the best right here. <laughs> I think he just got one. He's got the uh, bottomless... Bucket back behind him. It's perfect for a Wednesday night. While they're tuning, I'll tell you, uh, our shows have been kind of, you know, a little bit, a little bit off schedule-wise because of the whole COVID thing. But there's a date in March on your upcoming event sheet. You can check out uh, my friend Wade Bowen's going to come back and sit down with us and, and uh, hang out. And then for anybody that's here from the Houston area, this one's going to be really cool and kind of historic and fun for me. In June, we get, to, uh, we get to sit right here with Mickey Gilly and Johnny Lee and talk to them about the whole urban cowboy. I mean, it's going to be a crazy, crazy deal. And uh, so anyway... If you're having fun tonight with this, this show and hanging out and listening and learning, come join us again. That's the same one. Same one I've been using. Okay, I got it. Okay, I'm with you. It's a... <laughs> there it is. I don't, I don't know what damn key I'm in, man. <laughs> Let the beer bottle rattle off my pistol. 
seat of my Chevy pickup truck. And I'm taking these gravel roads as fast as my truck will go. I'm running like a scared white-tailed buck. It wasn't a night card game with Earl Ray and Bobby and some old boy they worked with from a day. That boy didn't like me and he said I was cheating. Gunshots rang out on the midnight air. Don't want to see the daylight But my back is alone tonight I wonder if she's waiting up for me I'm gonna hide out in the bottom Where I hunted deer and turkey I know that swamp like the back of my head I was born and raised here I wanted to be a good old boy Never thought I'd ever be a wanted man But soon they're gonna catch me Ain't no way around that Cause I don't know any other place to hide I wonder if back is Bible is still in the glove box Cause I'm sure Gonna need it if that boy dies Don't wanna see the daylight When my back is alone tonight I wonder if she's waiting up for me I spent uh, I spent several summers working for my cousin out in East Texas, and uh, one of my my uncles by marriage worked out in the oil patch. And the first time I ever heard your song, Oil Patch, man, <laughs> it took me back to driving around in that old Ford F-150. He'd shine the Q beam to make sure that. Rigs were running good, and he'd reach behind him and grab a hot 
banquet Coors beer from yeah. behind the seat of the truck and offer me one at about, you know, 12 years old. And I think I took a sip of it and politely declined after, uh, after that. Well, Warm I learned, original I learned Coors beer. Drink, I, I learned to drink hot beer. That's, that's you know, pretty rough. You're not here. You, you're pretty committed <laughs> if, 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 if you do that. Yeah. But uh, the one thing I love, Chris, about your music is just that it, it, it seems to take me to the place that you're singing about. I wonder if you'd sing that one for us tonight. Yeah. Yeah, this is Saber, Kentucky, 1976. They had a, uh, two bootleggers in the town. And, uh, and I, I could go buy beer when I was like 13, 14 at, at the bootleggers. And one of them was old, uh, had two daughters and they would, uh, they had a window in the living room and, uh, he had two young daughters. They were they were a year or two younger than me, but uh, they would uh, take your order and go get your <laughs> beer. They'd they'd raise that window up and they'd give you your beer just like a and uh, and her daddy would be sitting in his easy chair and her bossing them girls around. Uh, they they probably thought I was you know, 15 or something, you know, because I was always big for my age, you know. But uh, it's a true story. You can cut this part out too. Got six bucks. It's enough for beer run. Now we need someone to do the buy. My buddy Leno, he ain't never got no money, but he drinks up most beer every time. By nine o'clock, gotta have a case between us. Pull into the quick pick, let her head have some smoke. That said, Susie and Billy Scott's Camaro, Lindo gives her away. Billy says, You want your neck broke? They're about to go toe to toe. Here comes a cop car, little says the cemetery. Bill will see how bad you are another Friday night. In this old patch town, keep the fears out of sight. The winter state troopers come around. Now we ain't looking for trouble with my fight. What else you gonna do is just another Friday night. The 
Billy said, let's get it on. Land who just loves it. It's about all the fighting that got done. Sheriff pulls up, say, what you who long doing? I'm nothing much, Junior. Just trying to have some fun. He's acting tough and taking names. Shutting us down But at least we got something to talk about When Monday rolls around Another Friday night In this old patch town Keep the fears out of sight When the state troop Have y'all had a good time tonight? Chris, we got we got time for a couple more. I've kind of been leading you all over the place tonight. Uh, so I, I think I probably should let you pick a couple of songs that, <laughs> that, that you want to close us want. out with tonight. I, I, I would love to hear Framed. I would love to hear a little bit of the story behind that one and to hear that one, but, 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 but you pick. Here they come. <laughs> <coughs> All right. I had a, uh, what's that? Hit the ball a little too well. Pass it 90 acres. Oh, hit, hit the ball a little too well. Oh, yeah, I know. It, I ain't played that in a long time. Trooper said, boy, it's a wonder you're still alive. I've rode hard, love. I've been bruised and buff. I've been hitting the ground, turning around, and getting back up. And now they're laying them off down at Kankakee. Boards on the windows up and down the street. They're saying that it's gonna get darker before the dawn. Well, you can bet your ass I'll keep the lights on, keep my babies fed and throw my dog a bone. I'ma bring it on, get her done, don't run, SOB. Times are tough. 
But they ain't got nothing on me Jake got the warm back down scars on his face. He tussled with the bear, came in second place. He come back home every now and then with some brand new scars and I have to grin. You know I'm proud to call old Jake my friend. He's rode hard luck He's been bruised and bugged He's been hitting the ground Turning around and getting back up But now they're laying them off down to Kankakee There's boards on the windows up and down the streets They're saying that it's going to get darker for the dawn But you can bet your ass I keep the lights on Keep my baby's fed and throw my dog a bone I'ma bring it on Get her done, don't run S.O.B. Our times are tough But they ain't got nothing on me Times are tough, but they ain't got nothing on me. Chris, I think I can probably say it. I know I can say it for myself. I can probably say it for from everybody else here too. Is thank you for making the trek all the way down from Kentucky and starting your your, your run with this show tonight. It's, yeah. it's been a it's been a pleasure getting to hear more about your music. Good to be here. We Good appreciate beer. it. Yeah. It's fun. Well, uh, you get to finish this out. However, you want to finish this out. I'll say thank you to. Of course, the folks here at do -Si do they've been letting us do this for 14 years. They interview, interview people whose music we love. We appreciate that. Thank you, Chicago Title, for being our sponsor this season. And thank you to all you guys for coming out tonight. We sure appreciate that. Thank you very much. Hello. This, uh, I wrote this along with uh, another song, Send a Boat, in about two days, three days. I think I just holed up in my trailer and didn't come out and wrote these two songs. It's framed. <clears throat> <laughs> I think the last time I played this was uh, March 15th at Austin, Texas. <laughs> I got run out of town. <laughs> no, no more. Last show. Years 
go The music's out on the radio That shot was fired the night before The local man lay dead on the floor And the dust flying in the lumber yard The lights flashing on two black cars I said, Sheriff, I ain't done nothing wrong You just knock me down and put the handcuffs on I was framed They took me away Like I was the only one to blame Frank. Guilty, they said Railroaded me on a one-way train, train. And on judgment day They want me to hang my head in shame But I framed That's all I say Told you it's been almost Austin, a year. Texas in March. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for trying that if one you for me. Give me the lyrics, I, I'll play. They bought the joke right through the glass. At the murder trial, I seen a laugh. Turned away when they sent us, man. The guilty man ain't never told. All right, I'm doing good. Since right. we're not live. Well, see, now you get to hear another one. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, hold tight. <laughs> all right, I've been making Chris. I, I've been making him him uh, follow my lead all night. So we'll let him pick pick one to end us with tonight. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I play one I know. I'm sorry about that. that was, <laughs> I have to go on YouTube sometimes to remember the lyrics to my songs. <laughs> so, or just Google the lyrics, you know. That's awesome. Said bags looking for me, gonna take back what they own. And they can find their red Camaro on the Dixon Road. In a flooded cornfield, laying on its side. I'm trying to dodge a coal truck, now I'm trying to thumb a ride. But I won't look back Won't look back I guess I head on out to Knoxville Got a hen and an uncle out there Said he'd get me on at the sawmill If I cut my hair Maybe catch a ride in the morning Sleep for to. Don't worry about me, baby. I do what I gotta do. And I won't look back. I won't look back.
don't know why I called you Just wanted to explain Anybody come looking for me You never heard the name I guess I should have known, girl I walked out on you You're about the only good thing that I'll ever do And I won't look back Won't look back Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chris Knight. Thank you. All right, enjoy it. Thank y'all for coming.